Hello, my bookish friends. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley. Today we are going to do a chapter. What is this called? What is this called? Read a chapter <laughs> from these eight books that I have acquired from my library. I'm very excited. These are all, a lot of them are new release thriller and horror. Some of them not new release, but a lot of them are. I have no idea where to start and I'm gonna have to return these soon. There's no way I'm gonna get through all of them. So I want to figure out which one I should read next. So I felt like it was a good idea to just kind of read the first chapter of all of them, see what is piquing my interest, and then maybe also give you guys an idea of what these books are about. I will separate these in the chapters down below if you want to navigate through. I'm also going to read the first sentence when I show you these, and we're going to kind of rate the first sentences as well as the first chapter. So the first book I have here is Cherish Farah by Bethany C. Morrow. Don't really know what this is about other than it's a social horror. So let's read the first line. Chapter one. I'm sitting in a bedroom with the kind of vaulted ceiling I wanted in my own, in a house much larger and more extravagant than the one I can't go back to. And the fact that I can't enjoy it upsets me. Not a bad first line. I'd give it three out of five. Let's continue on. Denver, what are you doing? The next book I have here is one that I've been interested in for a while but haven't gotten to and that is The Paradox Hotel by Rob Hart. This one I know it's got potential paranormal, time travel. I don't remember exactly what it's about but it sounded really good to me. This chapter is entitled Quantum Entrapment which already I'm interested in. First line says, droplets of blood pat the blue carpet, turning from red to black as they soak into the fibers. Ooh, I like that. This is a, a murder mystery as well, if I didn't mention that. That sounds really good. Four stars. Four star first line. Next, this book, I don't even know why I picked it up because I read, I read this author's release last year and it was literally my most disappointing book of the year. But I've been hearing some good reviews about this and so you know what? We'll see. And that is Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier. I know this has about this family of rich people. I think they like have a back house or something that they like let people rent out and then they play a game where they try to make those people's lives miserable. It's supposed to have a lot of social commentary. Okay, first line. There is blood in the fountain turning the water an eerie rust color. Another bloody first line. I like that. Four stars as well. Next, we have Brother by Anya Allborn. I've been meaning to get to this for a while. All I know is there's this family of cannibals, and the youngest brother or something, maybe brother, I don't know, isn't on board, but he like meets somebody and he's trying to hide their family. I, I, I don't know. We'll find out. Michael twisted in his bed the threadbare blanket he'd used all his life tangled around his legs. Not a great first line. I'm gonna give that two out of five. Next, we have This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. I know you're like, how did you get all of these books from the library at the same time? I realized that if I'm not strictly trying to get audiobooks, I actually have a really good chance of getting physical books, which is like, I wish these were all audiobooks because that's how I read. Some of these I do have audiobooks for. They're just so much more accessible in physical form at the library. I don't know why. First line, This Thing Between Us, your parents wouldn't let me bury you in a tree pod, mostly your mom. I am very intrigued by that. That makes me wonder who they are talking about, who is our point of view. I'm gonna give that a five out of five for first line. Next, we have Sundial by, by Katrina Ward. Very excited, I loved The Last House on Needless Street. I've heard mixed reviews on this one, but I really think it's gonna be for me because her style of writing is something that I really, really like. I don't really know what this is about either other than um, a mother and her daughter go to the desert because her daughter starts acting strange. First line, perspective of Rob. It's the chicken pox that makes me sure my husband is having another affair. Oh, another good first line. Why would that make you sure your husband's having an affair? I don't know. Uh, four out of five for that first line. Okay, and we have Beneath the Stairs by Jennifer Fawcett. Again, I don't really remember what this is, although I think this is a debut horror novel. A woman returns to her hometown after her childhood friend attempts suicide at a local haunted house, the same place where a traumatic incident shattered their lives 20 years ago. Okay. Let's see, there's an Emily Dickinson quote in here. One not need a chamber to be haunted. Ooh, I like that. Okay, 
We have a prologue. It says spring. One of the girls found out about the house first. Well, that first line sucks. So let's check out chapter one. First line, I'm back. Okay, not promising. These are one star first lines. All right, and then the last book I have is These Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham Grant. I've heard a lot of mixed things about this too. It's not quite horror, but it's more like family drama stuff. But I know it's about this dad and this daughter that live isolated in this mountain. Some people that I trust have really liked it, so I might like it too, but I have no idea. Let's see what the first line is. Chapter one, something wrong, I can feel it. A sting pricking the skin and stitching inward. I like the like flow of that, but not the most tantalizing first line. I would probably give that a three out of five. So maybe we should read these in the order that I ranked them for the first line. Okay, this was a three. All right, this is how I am ranking best first line on top, okay? Should I predict, should I predict how I'm going to, what I'm going to like the best? Okay, here's the thing. After, I can only like predict the first chapter of what I'm gonna like. As far as books that I think I am going to like the best, from the top is This Thing Between Us, then Sundial, then Paradox Hotel, then Brother, Beneath the Stairs, These Silent Woods, Cherish, Farah, and then Good Rich People. So we will see how that goes, and I will check back in with you in just a little bit. five chapters in the whole thing so I'm not gonna read the first chapter all the way to page 81 but I did read to page 31 and I feel like the story is just kind of getting started I did read the back to get more of an idea of what this was about because I feel like I didn't get a whole lot from that first bit that I read but so I can tell you what I think this is about it's written in second person and from the perspective of Thiago. I have a friend with the same name and he pronounces it Thiago. So I don't know if it should be Thiago or Thiago, but the audiobook pronounce it Thiago. So I don't know. His partner has died, Vera. She's dead. He's talking to her and it's kind of going over their experiences together. We start out at the funeral and he's just talking about how all of her friends are reacting, how all of their friends are reacting, her mom, their kind of family dynamics between everybody. And then he starts talking about how they got together, how they got to know each other. He was, well, he said an independent contractor, but he worked for Uber, Lyft, and this other app. I don't know what it is, if it's real or not, but that you call to help you with like tasks around the house, like putting Ikea furniture together and stuff like that. That's how they met. Then one day she orders this thing called the Itza. From what I'm gathering, this is kind of like a Google Home or an Alexa. As soon as they get that, everything starts to change. They start hearing things in the walls, creaks in the floorboards, cold spots in the house, and apparently it gets worse and worse and worse to the point where things are being ordered from their accounts on Amazon and things like that and just showing up to the house that they have no idea what it is. It's supposed to be about grief and rage and this like weird interaction with technology and that kind of loss of humanity that we have in technology. And so I think that's a really interesting concept. Let's rank it. Um, let's see, on interest level, I'm gonna rank these at a 10 because I feel like that's gonna give me more, more variety. So interest level out of 10, I'm gonna give this a seven right now. That feels good. And we're gonna move on to the next one in line based on how I rated the first line and that was Sundial. I catch you in a war. Okay, I've finished the first chapter of Sundial. Um, <laughs> I'm really liking this. I am really liking this. This first chapter is from the perspective of 
Rob. Rob is the mother of this family. She has two daughters, Annie and Callie. Callie is the older of the two, but she still sounds pretty young. I did listen to audio as I read. And then her husband, Irving. <laughs> Irving's a piece of shit. We hate him. We absolutely hate him. He is a POS and he cheats on her all the time. Annie's closer to mom. Callie's closer to dad. And I think she's worried that Callie is going to be more like dad. Dad seems like a fucking sociopath, um, constantly cheating. She is a teacher. Rob's a teacher. Dad is in science and STEM in some area. There's a lot of odd dynamics going on in their neighborhood. Her, one of her good friends lives next door. Their children are the same age. And Irving is messing around with her too. And that's how she knows how Annie got the chicken box because her kids had it. The voice of Rob, love her. Like I'm interested in what she has to say. I'm loving the writing style. The second chapter is called Arrowwood. So I don't know how that's gonna go because it's like, I think that is going to be a section of the book that she's writing. She's writing a book um, series, like a teen series, I think it is. Very high interest in this. Like I just wanna keep reading it. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10 for interest level. I just feel like I'm gonna really like this. It's making me feel things. I'm feeling the things. I'm fucking angry for her and I'm on her side 100%. So we'll see what happens there. The next book on this list is These Silent Woods. So I'm gonna read the first chapter of that and then I will get back to you. Oh, by the way, the first chapter of this one was 24 pages long. So again, a little bit of a longer first chapter. read a little more than a chapter from this one the first chapter was only like 12 pages or something we're following a man and his daughter as i said before they live in the woods the daughter's name is finch he has a friend named jake who i think he said owns the property who comes by once a year for a supply run brings them supplies and such he's paranoid for some reason so i feel like there's gonna be something that happened in his past something that he's running away from they had some hens that were attacked by a raccoon and he had to pull one of the hens out of its misery and poor finch wanted to have a funeral for the hens and just like her little heart broke which is really sweet and tender. Um, he's fiercely protective of her. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, her mother was Cindy and apparently she died when Finch was four months old. I don't know how old Finch is now. And I don't know what happened to Cindy, but he seems to be traumatized by whatever happened to Cindy. That's kind of all I know. It is a male protagonist, so we have a male narrator. I like the narration voice. I might actually have all of these on audio. I don't know if there's any of these that I don't have on audio. I don't know, I'll find out as I go through them, I guess. Typically, I'm not as interested in following a male perspective as I am in following a female perspective, but so far, it seems fine. I am intrigued. I'm wondering what happened in his past, what he's running away from. They're waiting on Jake to show up, and I think when I read the premise a while back Jake doesn't show up I think they're gonna have to go into survival mode and that should be interesting I'm not as interested in this as I am in the other two at the moment I'm gonna give it like a five an intrigue an interest level so yeah move on to the next book which will be ooh, good rich people I don't have the audio for this one We're following this couple, Lila and Graham, and they live with Graham's mother, Margot. It sounds like Lila is like, why does Lila sound like a weird name? Um, sounds like Lila married into the money. There was a prologue, and but it was like a page and a half. So I read the prologue and I read the first chapter. Still, I'm only 10 pages in at this point. 
The first chapter is told from Lila's perspective and her voice was cracking me up. I was laughing at this. I just thought it was um, really funny. But when I think back at If You Disappeared, I, d I liked the writing in that book too. It was the way the story ended and how it wrapped up and made zero sense. That really, really pissed me off about that book. So now I'm like, maybe I should give her another shot. Let me read you a few lines from this that made me laugh. So Lila says, I am scared by how beautiful I am. She says, I am sad because I want everyone else to see it, but I don't want to see them. <laughs> Just stuff like that. She's making me laugh. Like the air of conceit and narcissism coming off of this woman's voice is it's thick. It's real thick. The very first prologue, when we first, like the first page and a half, it's Lila as well. She's found somebody online to come clean up their water fountain because it has blood in it. And he's questioning her like, what is this? It looks like blood. And she's like, I don't know what it is. I just live here. Clean up after me, peasant. And I know, like we haven't gotten into it in the first chapter, but I know that this is about people who invite people to live in their guest house and then try to make their lives miserable. I can kind of see that where this was heading. I think if this is well executed, it could be really good. I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised about this one so far. Um, my intrigue level, I would say, is about a seven. Okay, next we have the Paradox Hotel. Yay, I'm excited for this one. of Paradox Hotel and I think this might be my favorite so far. You can hear my husband, he's in a meeting in the other room so just ignore that. This was like a 30 page chapter as well so a lot happening, so much going on. I feel like my brain is reeling right now. Don't have the audio for this uh, but I might have to get it because I really want to continue on in this one. We're following January who is the head of security. She works for the Time Enforcement Agency. She is an agent. She is in charge of security at Paradox Hotel, a hotel run by the government in which rich people can pay ridiculous amounts of money to travel back in time. They can visit ancient Egypt. They can visit medieval times. They can go see the first production of Hamlet ever. They can go to, you know, just anything you can imagine. There's so many terms that I'm like, what? Ugh. She's unstuck. And I think this is a product of her doing too much time traveling because she has a scene with her doctor where he's like giving her pills to help this um, disorder or whatever it is. And he's like, you need to get out of time travel. Like it's gonna get worse. You're gonna advance to stage two. And apparently what unstuck means is that you kind of have a glitch in time space. Like you zone out for a second and you see things from the future or the past. And right now it's not really affecting her life too much, but if she continues to do this, it's going to really mess her up and eventually it's going to kill her but she I think she has a crush on somebody in the hotel and so she doesn't want to leave there's a non-binary character in here there is all of this mysterious stuff going on the government's not making enough money to keep this place running and so there is a meeting happening that all of these like trillionaires are coming to in which they are going to discuss privatizing time travel. I love that she's like in the service industry because it's really taking me back to my days in the restaurant industry. She's in the weeds, like everything's chaotic. She's so disdainful and sarcastic and like such an asshole to everybody that works with her. And she's just like all of her thoughts about these like rich ass customers that are coming in are just hilarious. So I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. She walks by one of the hotel rooms and she gets this weird sensation. She described it like a toothache in her brain. And so she stops and peeps in and she sees a maid cleaning in there in this room. And she looks past the maid and she sees a dead body in the bed, but the maid doesn't seem to see it. So she's like, is this a like time glitch thing that I've been experiencing or what? So I don't know if it's like, she's also can see ghosts. It's also like a paranormal thing, or if there's something, just something off with time space and that's, that's happening. You know? Apparently there's gonna be more people that are being killed and she has to kind of figure out what's going on in this mystery. This sounds so good to me right now and I don't know why it's taken me this long to pick this up because this could be 
like the book for me if it's done well. Interest level right now, 10 out of 10. Like I wanna keep reading this. Pretty, pretty, pretty good for right now. So we're gonna move on to the next book. So the next one is Brother. That was a quick one. Finished the first chapter of Brother. I did have that one on audio. Again, another male narrator, male protagonist. So that's kind of affecting my interest. I like, I don't want to say that, but it, I mean, it's true. So Michael is the brother. He is part of this family. This is set in Appalachia. This family seems very, it's giving me very Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. This family is, Let's say country. Let's just be nice and say country. They're cannibals. <laughs> so there's no avoiding that. Um, actually, that's not been confirmed yet. <laughs> we don't get that in the first chapter. It's a quick first chapter. It was like 12 or 13 pages. We're just kind of getting to know the family. You have mom and dad. You have Michael, his older brother, Reb, and older sister, Misty, I think is her name. Michael is 19, Misty's 21, I think Reb is maybe a year or so older. We work together as a family to entrap young girls and kill them. I think they eat them as well. Can I confirm? I think it's the mom that is like behind all of this. Misty isn't super on board with the killing and all of that, but she likes to collect little trinkets from the girls that they, they collect. And Michael kind of trades with her he will get the trinkets or the things the jewelry whatever from their bodies and give them to misty in exchange for her letting him use her record player they mentioned the doors in here which i love because i had a huge jim morrison phase like so i love the doors and i love that that's mentioned and then in the very like first scene the girl that they have captured has gotten away and she's she is off, she's running in the woods. And so mom calls for Michael because Michael's the fastest. I think that's like his role is to like run and catch them if they start to get away. I think Reb abducts them or like tricks them into feeling safe before the family abducts them. And I'm sure they have like a whole system going on. But Michael, he's afraid to speak up for what he thinks because he is the outlier in the situation. He is the different person in this family. He runs and he catches their target, I guess you could say. And that's basically the first chapter. This is one that I thought I was going to be really, really intrigued by, but maybe it's just that I just read The Paradox Hotel before this. But as of this moment, this isn't doing it for me right now. I'm intrigued by cannibalism and like these weird families. I still want to read this book, but this is not like piquing my interest like I thought it would. And it's not that their writing's bad or that I don't like the narrator. I don't know what it is. I would give this about a five right now on a one to 10 scale. So I think going right down there with these silent woods. Okay, so next we have Cherish Farah and then Beneath the Stairs. What is that? the first chapter of Cherish Farah. I'm actually more intrigued with this one than I thought I was gonna be. I've heard some mixed reviews on this. I knew it was a social horror and that was it, but basically we're following so far these two best friends, Cherish and Farah, two black girls. Cherish is adopted by a white family. She's super spoiled, like her family is rich like rich 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 and so it's her birthday she's having this like week-long celebration with like all of these different parties and just extravagant celebration but the person who's telling the story is Farah, who's her best friend i don't know yet i assume Farah's parents are black but they could be white too but that would be kind of coincidental if you had two best friends who were black both of them adopted by white families. I don't know. I haven't, I don't know yet. Um, but in any case, Farah seems really 
jealous of Cherish. And she also seems kind of duplicitous. Like the voice uh, that we're getting from her, since it's from her perspective, is very conniving, very like putting up a front, very calculated. She seems to be in control of every response she has. And throughout this first chapter, she's kind of having moments where she has genuine emotion coming through and she's just beating herself up because she let her real emotions come through and her real feelings come through. She says, Cherish is easy to love, but I'm almost equally enamored with the Whitmans, which are her parents, Cherish's parents. It's the way they love her. It's the unapologetic extravagance they dole out to their daughter, the way they never temper their coddling of her that makes them remarkable. She says, colorblindness requires the kind of delusional naivete that I have only ever believed in Cherish. So she's saying that Cherish thinks she's white, basically. So we're at one of Cherish's birthday party events and the Whitman's Cherish's parents call them both on stage and talk about like when they became best friends, how Cherish accidentally stepped on a nail and Farah, in order to have some sense of camaraderie and to put herself in that position of pain to equal Cherish's went ahead and just deliberately stepped on the nail as well. And Cherish's parents at that point were like, she is the best, best friend ever, because she put herself in that position for you on purpose. And it's this kind of childhood innocence and like loyalty. I don't know where this is going. I don't, I don't, I have no clue where this is going, but the fact that Farah seems so duplicitous is very intriguing to me. Let's see if this says anything more about what this is about. Okay, 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 okay. So it seems like the more time Farah starts to spend at the Whitman house, the more her parents think something's wrong, weird things start happening. And now I'm getting the like get out reference because maybe there's more to this perfect family. And there's more to the idea that Cherish thinks she's white. I don't know. I think this could be really interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to give this for my interest level. I'm going to give it a seven. So another seven, definitely up there. And we just have one more, so I will get back to you when I finish reading the first chapter from Beneath the Stairs. I finished the first chapter and the prologue of Beneath the Stairs. I'm gonna be honest, the entire <laughs> prologue, well, it's like a page and a half. For the prologue, I had no context. I was, I have never been so uninterested <laughs> in anything. Well, I don't know if that's true, but, but it did end saying something about, okay, so there's this octagon house. Apparently a man, there was like murdered his family there back in the, in the day. I almost said back in the back, back day. That is a ode to Beth right there. <laughs> Somebody's in this house, there are girls in this house or something, and they look under the stairs and they hear a voice saying, help me, help me leave this place. So that was the first thing that caught my attention. I think this might have been these two girls when they were kids. <laughs> Putting this together right now. It's two girls when they were kids in this house. So it's Abby and Claire, I believe. So then in the first chapter, first sentence is, I'm back, and we're following Claire, Denver, you can't eat your food right now. <laughs> I literally have my chair over his food bowl and he is eating <laughs> underneath me. Denver. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to get you there, bud. <laughs> right now, that's when you're gonna do that, right now. Something's happened to Abby. I think she's in the hospital. Her mom called Claire and is like, you need to come here. She like was lucid for a moment and said your name. Oh, she's in a medically induced coma. Claire has a boyfriend named Josh, I think. Yeah, and that's like all I'm getting. And, and I think her mom died about five months ago, or at least I'm assuming she did. Cause she keeps like, she saw a little girl with her mom and she like freaked out. Overall, I'm not really that interested in this right now. Short prologue and first chapter, so you know, not much to go off of, but I think this is going to be probably at the bottom of the stack here. 
maybe like four or five for interest level. So this is the stack we ended up with. So we have Paradox Hotel and Sendile in the lead, This Thing Between Us, Cherish Farah, Good Rich People, These Silent Woods, Brother, and then Beneath the Stairs. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and get the audiobook for the Paradox Hotel, and that's probably gonna be my next read. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this journey of reading these first chapters of these books, testing the chapters, so to speak. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Recently hit 4,000 subscribers. You guys are the absolute best. That was my goal for the entire year, so that's where we're at. Um, if you liked this and you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did. Give me a like. Let me know if you've read these books, how you feel about these. Did you love them? Did you not? Are you interested in them now? Are you intrigued? Are you intrigued? Are you entertained? That's going to be it for me today. Don't forget that life is short, so read widely. I will see you next time. Cheers and goodbye!